Welcome to the Bash scripting tutorial at Simply Learn. Whether you are a beginner or just looking to refresh your knowledge, this tutorial is designed to introduce you to the powerful world of Bash scripting. Bash is a default shell on many Linux and Mac operating systems, and it plays a vital role in automating tasks, managing systems, and saving time. By the end of this video, you will have the foundational skills to write your own Bash script and use them effectively to automate repetitive tasks. Now, before you move on, here is a quick agenda. We are going to start with an introduction to Bash scripting. Then we are going to understand why Bash scripting is important. Then we will deep dive into variables and data type. Then we are going to understand the control flow. Finally, we are going to work with files and directories. Now, before we move ahead, here's a quick info for you. Simply Learn has got advanced executive program in cybersecurity. This course is in collaboration with Microsoft Azure and CompTIA. You are going to learn to defend and prevent and also master defensive and offensive security. Plus, you are going to engage in three capstone plus 45 plus projects and also integrated lab. You are going to explore tools like Metasploit, Nmap, John the Ripper and many more. So guys, hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. Now, before you move ahead, here is a short quiz to test your knowledge. Which of the following is used to repeat a task multiple times in Bash? Your options are if, loop, while, or repeat. Mention your answers in the comment section below. Now, before you move ahead, I request you guys do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon so that you don't miss out any update from our end. Let's get started. So guys, for this tutorial, I'll be using Libx for the demonstration of Linux. Now, first thing first, what is Bash? So Bash stands for Born Again Shell. It's like both command inline shell and a scripting language. Now, as a shell, it lets you type commands like mkdir, pwd, ls. I think so most of you have heard. If you have not, then we are going to explore all these things in this tutorial. So Linux as a language lets you automate tasks into the scripts. Think of Bash as both a translator interpreting your command to the operating system just like a secretary, like following a script of instructions you gave. Now you'd be wondering why use Bash? Basically, we want to use Bash to automate repetitive tasks. Imagine you are a system administrator and every day you need to back up your project files into a folder with today's date. Doing this manually, like typing commands again and again, is very hectic. Now with Bash, these things can be done very smoothly. The second reason is managing servers without manual clicks. You have 10 servers, imagine, and you want to check if they are running or not. So you can type the command on the terminal and it does the task very easily. Finally, it controls Linux systems directly. If you need to clean temporary files every week to free up the disk, so you can just type the simple command rmrf tmp. So doing this manually is very risky. But with Linux, you can easily automate these things. So these are some of the reasons that we discussed why Linux is so important and why we are using Bash. Now, let's say if you are using Mac operating system or Linux, then Bash comes pre-installed. You just open the terminal and start scripting. For this tutorial, as I've already told you that I'm using an online terminal platform. So you can also use that. It's a very amazing uh, tool and you can see it has a you know time limit also so mostly you're going to get one hour of free hosting done on this terminal and you can practice most of the commands do the in a simulation if you are learning linux now if you are wondering if you have windows operating system then you can also install windows subsystem for linux that also does the job well you can just open your powershell as administrator and then you are in the given terminal as Linux. But for that, you need WSL. So even if you don't have WSL, if you're just a beginner who's trying to learn the command, you can use this online hosted tool called Libx and it works perfectly very well. So let's say if you are on Windows, what you need to do, just go to the terminal, okay, open PowerShell as an administrator, okay, and just click on this. And here, after that, what you need to do is type WSL, install so that is going to install the windows subsystem for linux now for this tutorial i'll be using libx which is an amazing tool okay and uh, it's free also and you get a uh, 60 minute of free hosting time so let me close this okay now let us discuss a bit about bash script so a bash script is like a text file with bash commands executed line by line 
Think it like writing a recipe. Instead of cooking each step manually, you write it down so that anyone can follow it. Similarly is the bash script. Let's say for example, we want to print hello world. That's the first most basic thing if you have learned any other programming language. So for printing, we basically use echo. So type echo and you can just put hello world. Okay. So this is a command for printing the hello world. So you can see here, I've got the output as hello world. Now let's say you want to do the same process and save the given file. So first create your given file. So you can use this command. I can type touch file.txt. Okay. So with the help of touch command, we have created an empty file. Let's say you want to do the same process. Let's say hello world. And you can give a name file.txt all over here. Let's give a different name. Let's say file one. Okay. So this is going to create your given file. Now let's see, you want to show date and the given user. So for example, you can type echo. Let's say today date. So guys, this is a given command. If you are trying to know the date, so just click enter and you can see it has given us the given time. Let's say you want to know the user. So you can also type echo logged in as user and you can type the same thing as dollar user okay you can see the user it says is libx let's say you want to ping google.com so what you can do all over here type ping slash c then you can type to google.com okay so this is going to ping google.com you can see it has started pinging google.com so basically if you want to know that uh, your internet is working or not it's very great for that okay so you can see it says two packets transmitted zero received 100 percent packet loss time 102 millisecond now let us delve into a bit of basics and try to understand variables and data types so what are variables guys you can imagine variables as the container for values and bash has variables for strings, numbers, and array. You can think of them like a sticky note where you can jot down name, number, or list. For example, let's say you want to create a string and store a value, say a name. So for that purpose, you can just say a name and all over here, you can type the given name with the double quotation, let's say. So that's how you do it let's say you want to print the given name so what you can do all over here type echo and then type hello and after that you can access the variable with dollar name so that's how you access a given variable just click enter and you can see it says hello Neil. now let's say you want to work with numbers so what you can do guys you can just declare the variable something like this let's say x equals to 10 and you can also give another variable name y. Let's say y equals to 20. And let's say you want to do the sum of both of them. So what you can do guys, you can just type echo. And then you can type something like sum. And here, what you can do all over here, you can give a dollar name for accessing the given variable. So let's say we are accessing this time x and y. So type x plus y very simple command guys and finally click enter so you can see it has given the sum as 30 now let us move ahead and discuss about the control flow so control flow are very very much important let's say you want to control the entire flow of your code so in the decision making process it's very much important first let us try with the if else command let's say we type something like echo enter a number then after this, you can say read a number. So we can declare something like a variable num. Okay. After that, we could type something like if dollar num okay, is greater than 10, then after this, you can type something like this, 10. Then you just print out, let's say the number is greater than 10. So after this, what you can do, you can see echo. So this is how you basically control the flow of the 
given program. So this is how you write a command in the if statement. So what things you can do is, you can use if as a condition statement to check whether given the file exists or not. You can also use it for checking like if the disk uses is greater than 80% or not. So for these commands, you can easily do it. Let me tell you one case study also. Let's say echo enter a given day. Then after this, let's say the day is Wednesday. Next, what you need to type is read day. And then from here, you can create a case. For example, case, let's say dollar given day. And after that, what we can do is we can type day in. And from here, we could type something like if it is mon start of the week. Okay, you can something type something like this. Echo. Similarly, you can create another case. For example, let's say Friday. Okay, so you can type Friday echo the weekend is near. So you can create cases like these. Okay, so this is how one thing that you can do is. So guys, you can create case something like this, like case day in, let's say the day is Monday. You can say start of the week or you can type Friday. Okay, echo the weekend is near. Make sure you are using the delimiters properly. And also when you are adding a case, so you can see a double quotation plus a half parenthesis. So if you have done programming, let's say in Python or Java, then doing programming in Linux is kind of pretty different, but the logic is all the same. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea how to use conditionals in Linux. Now let's move ahead with some for loops. Let's say you declare the same array, let's say fruits, okay? And after that, let's say you want to loop it. So if you want to print individual elements like apple, bananas and mango, then for loop is very much important. You can consider for loop as something used for iteration where you declare a variable and this pointer goes iterating from one element to the next element and finally till there is no element left. So guys, you can type something like this for fruits in then you want to access this given variable. So you create double commas plus there is a dollar sign fruits at the rate all. So at the rate means it is going to print all these given elements. So guys, let's say you want to declare this given array. So we have started with fruits and we can see we have apple, banana, cherry and date. Now we can use a for loop to iterate over each of the element in this given array. So we can use for fruit in, then you can use dollar. We want to print all the elements, so I have added dollar. So you can see fruit is a given variable which will be used as an iterator. And finally, we are printing this given element. So you can see all over here, we are getting apple, banana, cherry and date. So this is how the for loop works. Let me also show you an example of while loop. So guys, you can see all over here. First, we have initialized a variable called count. And let's say we have done it equals to one. Then we are using a while loop. So while loop is always used with condition, just like your if statement. So you can say while count is less than five. So we are accessing this given variable. And finally, what we are doing is we are printing echo count is count. So this is the given variable which we are trying to print. And finally, we are incrementing this count operator. So you can see it starts with one, two, three, four and five. So till it's less than five, we can keep uh, you know, incrementing the count and adding one. So on the first iteration, you could see the value is one. Second iteration, you could see the value is two. On the third iteration, you could see the value is three. And final iteration, you could see the value is five. So this is how our loops work all over here. Now, let us also explore some of the commands which are very useful when you're working with files and directories. So finally, let us try to understand how to use commands while working with file and directories. Let's say you want to create any directory. So you type a command mkdir my folder. Let's say you want to go to that folder or navigate to that given directory. Let's say the name you have given my folder. So in order to navigate that, we type cd my folder. Let's say you want to create some empty files. Let's say the file name is let's say file1.txt, file2.txt. So we use the touch command. Let's say you want to write a content to a file, then basically we type echo hello world file1.txt. 
Next operation is let's say you want to copy anything. So for that copying, you type cp file1.txt file2.txt. So we are copying file1 to file2. If you want to see the list of given files, so you type lsl. Let's say you want to delete any files. Let's say you want to delete file1 and file2. So you type rm, which stands for remove, file2.txt. Let's say you want to go back to a previous folder. So you type cd. And finally, you want to remove the given folder. So you type rmr my folder. So guys, these are some of the basic commands while you are working with files and directories. I hope so guys, you would have enjoyed our today's session on bash scripting tutorial. These were some of the basic things that we discussed. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like these kind of videos, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon.